my channel. Today we have the stash episode and I will organize my yarn into my new yarn cabinet and I am excited. I have some decaf coffee, have something nice to drink and we'll get straight into it. I feel like I need to plan this somehow but I'm probably not gonna do it. I will just start putting things into shelves and hope that it works and I realize that I'm probably not gonna fit everything into this even though it is spacious but there is probably not enough room for all of my yarns so I'll probably put the yarns I'm most likely to use in the near future in here and the rest of the yarn I'm gonna store in a box in the closet where they are right now so we have shelves over here two shelves and same in the bottom here and yeah let's get into things so the first thing i'm gonna put in is my sweater quantity of the cascade 220 in this beautiful dusty pink color it is so pretty uh, i bought it for a sweater that i did not end up doing and i have plans for it right now i just i'm waiting for the inspiration to cast them on and spare needles oops i dropped one um, this is actually one of my favorite yarns. I find it to be quite durable and it is very soft, but not in a super wash merino soft, but like wool soft. And the color is super pretty. I will put it maybe there on the bottom shelf. And here is the next thing. I have Sunnyskan Sunday and Tin Silk Mohair in this beautiful raspberry red colorway. And this actually belongs to a whip that has been pretty much abandoned for a while. But I am intending on continuing that during this autumn. Um, so I think that much must go there as well because it has already a purpose and I have already begun knitting it and I just think it will look pretty next to the <laughs> next to the, the dusty pink and yeah it is just very pretty raspberry color I know some of you suggested that it would be nice to organize based on yarn weight um, but I'm probably not gonna do that. It would be very like logical but I'm more <laughs> illogical I guess. I want to categorize the yarn based on the projects and maybe I could put them in different shelves, but this just makes more sense in my brain. And they are similar in color. It is pretty. I have this little yarn baby here. Um, again, whoopsie. Again, I feel like this belongs to that shell because of the color. And I have a project in mind for this one as well. I think this would be beautiful May top. I have no idea how to pronounce pronounce that in 
English because we say it like mu, but you know the one um, from Creadia Studio. And I think this would be beautiful. And I already have that in my fall autumn knitting plans. And I think I want to cast it on. And it looks beautiful next to the other ones. And yeah, this is Schachenmeyer Merino Extra Fine Silky Soft. And it has tensile as well. If it would only say how much it has 68% merino wool and 32% lyocell, which is like tensile and lyocell are the, are the same. Tensile is just a brand name. So I have enough for the uh, May camisole, May top. And I have been looking for the B camisole for a long time. But the May camisole is similar, but knit in DK. So it is a lot quicker knit and I don't have to bang my head against the wall with a very tight gauge. Because I am a loose knitter and if I would like to have that dense of a gauge, I would probably have to go for like 1.75 millimeter needles. And I have no patience for that, so I'm not gonna do it. I will wait for the release of the May top and knit that. And this one goes next to that. Next up, I have these silk mohairs. And these are from Knitting for Olive. The pink one is called Dusty Pink. And the purple one is Artichoke Purple. And this one I'm already using for the Jules Gensa and this I actually don't have a plan right now. I bought this to hold with another yarn but the color combo did not work and I actually bought this one <laughs> also to hold with that one problem yarn. I did not enjoy the color and it did not work and I ended up selling the problem yarn and now I have silk mohair <laughs> which is funny um, but this one I'm using for Jules Gensa this one is waiting for a suitable project and I'm putting them there because they are one of my favorites and they go well with the color scheme so there is absolutely no rhyme or reason with my organizing system but you can also organize by color. Maybe I'm going with that. Hmm. I will show you the close up. The cabinet was actually originally this color, but I painted it. It used to belong to my parents. It was uh, in my childhood home and it was located in our kitchen corner and there was you know the vases and some ceramics and stuff and they did a kitchen renovation and they don't need this anymore and it was just in my parents garage waiting to be transported to landfill and I was like absolutely not I need this one can I paint it and take it with me and they said yes and now I have the most beautiful yarn cabinet have a sip of coffee or tea or drink of your choice and tell me what are you knitting and with what yarn in the comments down below and sorry if the lighting is not the best it is a very gloomy and rainy day but i don't want to use the overhead light because it makes the entire quality very bad not my favorite so there is some natural light 
so I'm trying to use it. Next yarn! This one just feels like it belongs to that shell. I This is Moku Yarn Alpaca Silk and it is hand dyed here in Finland and it is right up my alley. I love the color. I made the very much modified cumulus blouse with this one and it took me a little over one skein of lace weight yarn and this is almost 100 grams so it is almost full skein so I could maybe get something if I held it up with the mohair um, but mostly I'm going with the feeling that it belongs to that shelf. And same with this one. This is the Lumoava Silky uh, yarn, uh, mesmerizing silk, if it's loosely translated. And it is this silk merino blend and it is beautiful. I made the white top from Knitting for Olive in this yarn and it has been wonderful to have on. It is very soft. It feels like a gentle hug. I was thinking this might be very nice scarf. Uh, maybe a Sophie scarf or something similar. And yeah, it is just so nice. Let's move to the top shelf and I was thinking the top shelf could be neutrals. I had this wool in it comb, this is 100% British wool and this is the colorway cream nip and it is pretty. I have not yet to use it but I was thinking of holding it double and knitting a very classic cable knit sweater and I think it will be awesome. I'm actually very excited to use this and I'm sad that I haven't used it yet. So I will take this up very soon and start. It actually goes very nicely in the back triangle. And this is the next pile I'm gonna put in. This is the Dansk Pelsold from Jelhold Unspinneri. And I am not yet sure what I will do with it, but I have some ideas. I think that this one hold with a very light fingering or lace weight yarn might be very nice cumulus blouse again i love the look of it but i'm not very excited about holding three three strands of mohair or spending that much money i actually bought this one second hand and it was not that expensive and the color is this beautiful kind of a bit reddish brown. It has a lot of red in it, but it's still not overly warm, warm toned. And I think it would be a gorgeous cumulus blouse. And I think it would also be really really functional in my wardrobe to have this neutral and kind of it is a neutral base so that might be the project i also love it how i low-key contradict myself i said that i'm gonna put here the things that i will cast on in the near future and then I'm putting there some yarns that I have no idea what I will do with. But it's nice to plan and, you know, visualize the purpose for the yarns. And 
This is more spacious than I thought, so it will be good. It doesn't matter that I improvise. I like improvising on these kind of things and I want to make it pretty with the colors. And now when I see those, I probably should put them also there because they are the next cast on. That was simple. And if you want to know what the yarn is or what I'm intending on using it, I hope you will watch the last podcast episode, but in very short, it is a alpaca wool blend and it will be the skirt, the waffle loop skirt. This yarn is actually my friend's. She gave it to me so that I will knit her a sweater. And it's been a while, so I probably should start. I caked up the yarn in March and I still have not started. So that might be a cast on in the very near future. And the yarn is... Ruukin Kehräämön Alpaca and Raw Silk Blend. This is sport weight, maybe. And it is suggested to knit in a kind of thick needles. So it should be a kind of quick project. There was also a knot in the skein, so I have this tiny little ball that goes with with these next up i have these this is isa girl alpaca 2 and this is this beautiful um cool toned grayish beige and i actually like the color very much this was originally in a scarf, but I ended up frogging it because the other color in the scarf did not really suit me. And I am not sure with what I will do with this. I was thinking that it might go well with the Dansk Belzold and I could use them and have this kind of marled cumulus blouse. Let's see if it works. They might work together, I think, or it might be too variegated or marled for me. I would have to need a swatch, which is not my favorite thing to do, but it is necessary. But yeah, this still goes in there and I actually have more of that yarn in a UFO or unfinished object if you will and I just need to put that on and really think if I enjoy the garment it is almost finished and but I just think that it is too itchy to be that close to my body so I would need something that has more ease I will just show you I was test knitting the another ripped body and it is a beautiful pattern it has this really nice shaping here but I just don't enjoy the feeling of this yarn so skin tight so it might be that I have to frog this which is kind of sad but if I don't wear it why should I keep it like this especially if it works with the Dansk Belzold 
I will frog this and use it for a cumulus blouse or some other project, but most likely that. It is a shame because this is a lot of knitting, like a lot. This is very thin yarn and it is in, <laughs> in ribbing, so sucks to suck, but it might be that this goes to the frog pile. It has been in the shelf of shame that I talked about in the last episode and I will probably leave it on my desk and try it on and maybe frog it later. Maybe I should knit the swatch today. I will do that. Next up I have this beautiful unspun that I bought second hand. It is thin sheep wool and it is so soft and lovely. I used this one for my levitate wrap and it has been wonderful. I love the lightness and the um, softness. It is warm, but it is also very light uh, when you wear it. I still have four full cakes of this and a little more. So I could make another levitate wrap, but I'm not gonna do it because why would I need two of the exact similar ones? Um, so I was maybe thinking a big scarf or this one would also be a cumulus blouse. Hmm, maybe that one is what I need in my life. But maybe it is my toxic trait to think that everything could be a cumulus blouse. Everything and anything can be cumulus blouse. But yeah, this one is going to the shelf. It's looking so nice. And then there is this Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair in the color Dark Mousse. I absolutely love this color. It is this very, very deep dark brown. It is cool brown, so there is a lot of like gray tones into it, so it's not warm with like golden or or like yellow or orange in it. It almost looks like this dark gray, but it is brown. And I bought this to match with another yarn that I ended up not wanting to make the project with. And I actually sold that yarn. So now I have this mohair. I was thinking that this might be part of a shawl, maybe with the unspun, if I'm not doing the cumulus blouse with it. But I really do enjoy this color, so. It shall go to the shelf, but I'm not sure yet what I will make with it. Have a zip. Next one, there is two very messy skeins of Isager Trio 1 in this beautiful chestnut colorway. It is, um, it is reddish brown, but the red is almost like this burgundy tones and it is very pretty. I used this one to hold with the unspun and then I used this for the Helle slipover and I still have more. And I was thinking I might be able to squeeze a Florence bag out of these ones. I still have some partial skeins from the Helle slipover so it might work. And if it doesn't, I might just do a smaller bag. It is what it is, but I think this would be very pretty. 
Florence back and very functional. We love the functionality in here. And that is why I have this, um, my husband's office chair in here so I can swing, swing around. The next one has a project attached to it. Um, it is this saw pullover. There is a mess. Let's look at the other side. And I just lost momentum with this one. It was in the spring. The summer was already almost summering. And I did not feel like knitting with British wool. This is the woolly knit British wool cone again. So I just don't want to continue it anymore. And I have already another plans and it is a beautiful rain in there i enjoy rain so much so i will use this for the storm sweater by petit that comes very soon and i'm excited one of my favorite sweaters is the guernsey genser by sandesgarn which is very similar to petit knit's ingrid sweater and the storm sweater has the same vibe, but it doesn't have cables. All of the structured sections are made with pearls and knits, pearl and knit stitches. So there's no cabling involved, even though I like cables, but I just crave this simplicity right now. And I think this would be a perfect match. Uh, for that and holding it double uh, obviously and here is my massive cake that has some Isager Marilyn in it but it is like a beehive but together they will make a beautiful beautiful storm sweater and I will put these in there after I have frogged the beginning of the Zoe sweater. Next one I have this very crinkly bag of yarn. I will take one and spare you from the crinkling. So this is the Hjertegarn cotton merino which is called lana cotton. I have been calling it merino cotton but Lana Cotton 212 and this is the colorway 403 and this is lovely yarn I used this for my twist loop top and I bought this second hand I had 10 skeins <laughs> of this so I still have 7 left and I was thinking it could be Cumulus Tea or some very simple knitted top. I'm not in a rush to use it, but I will probably put it in the top shelf with neutrals because I have a sweater quantity of this. So the top shelf will be all full when I put the last bully knit cone in there. I'm very happy with the aesthetic of it even though it could fit a lot more yarn but I want to be able to grab the things I want and also be able to see them so I don't want any like boxes in the upper shelves at least so next we'll move into the bottom shelves and I will probably speed it up and organize it and then show you and tell you about the yarns. So I did not think this true because I have a lot of very random bits of yarn and 
I have no idea how to store them in there. Or should I maybe just put them in a box and never look at them? Mm, that doesn't sound like a good idea. So I will probably try to find some organizers or something so I could put them in there. But it's very hard because the cabinet is shaped like a triangle because it sits in the corner. So interesting. I don't know how I'm gonna organize it. There is some uh, summer yarns, mostly this is Mandarin Petit, then there is Tinline and Porcadi Batsi and Porcadi Batsi Giza. I also have some bits of Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino that I have used that I will probably use to lengthen those garments because they are too short but I will do it when I have the energy for that let's see I also have these two balls of knitting for olive cotton merino in the dusty blue way and I absolutely love this colorway I just haven't knitted up anything in it yet and I also have this beautiful it is actually blue but it comes across like gray it is kind of similar with these ones and it is very thin lace weight wool yarn uh, I would say that if I held this double it would still be lace weight it is that thin and I have I think I have 178 grams of it so I have no idea what to do with it right now but I'm thinking this could match but they are they are waiting right now I would just need some kind of basket that was very malleable and put it in there so I could put some of my random merinos in there. Maybe I have one. I do have one very <laughs> floppy uh, basket that I crocheted at some point. And I will put my random pieces of merino in here. These are mostly knitting for olive skeins, the end of the skein. And there are some that there is like this full skein of merino. This was some, what is, what was it? Some cheeky merino joy or something. It was very nice to work with. Uh, I made a beanie, the muscle borrow hat for my husband and I'm definitely going to use this for something, but I still have no idea. This one is left over from my Cardi Jumper by Vertnit. And there is some left. This could be the Bandeau version of the Juno Top or something else. We'll see. This one is Isagera Merilin. Not sure what I will do with it. Maybe I don't have to say that I'm not sure what I will do with it because that is true with most of these very random bits of yarn. I will just put them in here and call it a day. Maybe I will put my random alpaca and wool skein ball bubbles in there as well this one is Isagar Alpaca 1 I think and this one is Semila Melang by Busy Garn I will just put them here and not think about it for a while there is also quite a lot of some sock yarn this one is Novita Nalle Nalle means teddy bear 
and I made the thigh high socks with this one and I ended up frogging them because they just wouldn't hold up at all so I will do maybe some knee high socks at some point in a tighter gauge so they will probably hold up better or not but this one goes with sock yarn I have this beautiful sample skein from Villa Vantut which is a Finnish dyer and this is the comb wool and it is very soft but there is so little it is 20 gram mini skein so I'm not sure what I will do with it I had this idea that I will do the Olymp sweater vest the sweater vest is my least favorite word it is very hard to combine those two words but I will do it and in a kind of neutral slash bluish color scheme and maybe I can put these kind of things in it it is a very versatile pattern so you can use different weights of yarn just hold them double or triple or something I also have these these are also from Lilla Vantut and I want to be fully transparent. I was gifted these yarns. Um, I was gifted this one for the design I was making. I have not made any knitwear design in a long time. Um, I made this Karna scarf and she actually asked me to design a, a single skein pattern for her so it was this one this is also the comb wool and it is in the colorway garna and that's why it's called garna scarf but i have this one bit left too this is almost the entire skein of dark gray dance bell sword i used this for my vertices unite when the when I ran out of the yarn I was actually using so there is much left I'm pretty sure this is the BC Garn Shetland wool I used this for the woodland cardigan I made and I must say I have been very brave to do my first cardigan with color work and Steaking. What was I thinking? There is also some tuku wool. I gifted the yellow tone one for my friend. And I have these colorways. Oh no, this one also. I have these colorways left. They are so pretty. I originally had a design in mind but then it just it became too hard to make it the way i wanted it to be and i wanted it to be a nice knitting experience and it wasn't so i had these left i might do my another cable sock design with this one because i think it would be very nice yarn option for that so I used this for my daughter's sweater, she never wore it and it was kind of ugly and then I frogged it. I have these cedar wood coins in, in here even though I don't think we have a lot of moths in here but you can never be too cautious when you have a lot of yarn in one place. These were frogged for my sweater, my I'm actually doing a sweater for my daughter in this yarn right now. So let's see how much I can use up with that. And the rest of it can be used for socks because this is originally merino sock base. It is from Moku yarn and the colorway is called Hertwater. Here is some 
drops air i'm not sure what to do with this yarn i might do the letty hoopu with this one because it is very beautiful i just haven't had the time or interest to cast it on yet so this is just hanging out in my stash i have no use for these ones and i'm not sure if i ever will use these these are the Camarose Lama Urd and I might put up these for a sale because I have had these for a long time and I have not used them so they might get a new home. Then there is this. Uh, this is knitting for Olive Heavy Merino. I originally wanted to make a sweater. I ordered too little yarn and then I made a sweater vest with it and a beanie with it and then I frogged the sweater vest because I hate the word combination sweater vest sweater vest sweater vest <laughs> and I frogged it because it wasn't fitting the way I wanted to and now I have these and this little I don't know even what to call them. I have these, many of these, and they are so messy. I might put them in a separate little bag so they stay in one place. But there is definitely enough for a sweater vest. I just need to find one that is not the, like the last one. It was not good more drops in a weird little pile i am exposing myself then i have this weird brown yarn that has camel in it but i'm not sure anymore i think it was lang yarns and i got this from a friend a long time ago now I made a beanie for my friend's toddler with this one, but it was way too small. And I also made a collar for my daughter, but it is too small now. So I think I frogged. Did I frog it? No, I still have to frog it. So I have enough for something in this brown. I might have to put these in a prettier cakes. So I'm more excited about this because this, this is not inspiring. And the last one on this pile is this beautiful burgundy colored yarn, which has fluff in it. This is called Gilliet by Dererum Natura or Gilliet. I have no idea how to pronounce it and i am not the biggest fan of this yarn i like the knitting for olive heavy merino more than this one but i was thinking that i might knit the minu shawl or minu scarf for my mother in this because it would be pretty and i think it would be a nice christmas gift and i really like the pattern so i want to knit that many times there is also this this stupid little i don't know what what you call it the weird small amount of yarn but yeah i will need to organize them in a nicer small cakes or something to make me excited this is the random basket it goes over here this is my sock yarn basket and i think it goes to the bottom shelf just right i also have this very random um, pouches of yarn this one is a sweater quantity that i frogged 
and I think it might be drops nord or something but it is just waiting here when I need another sweater quantity of yarn. I also have a sweater quantity in this green yarn. It is West Yorkshire Spinners. That is also a very difficult word for a thin and illustrious DK. I made a sweater called Blackout. What is the sweater? It was called Braids of Grass, but it did not fit me, and since then I have known not to make circular yokes for myself. Uh, but I use this yarn, and I really do like this yarn and this color. I just haven't knitted anything with it after that. And this one goes to the bottom shelf as well. And I also might need some C-block bags for these little yarn babies that are filled with noodle yarn. I just don't have the bags right now. I will do that later so I can get them nice and neatly organized on the bottom shelf. I am actually quite surprised in how much this cabinet can hold because there is a lot of yarn in this small cabinet. There is only one very random bag of yarn that has these uh, remnants of this little basket thingy and some very thin cotton yarns and so on. And here is my random <laughs> <laughs> random bowl of stuff that we will go through next. Yeah, this one needs also the Ziploc bags um, because it is very messy. There are random mohairs, these are from Drops, and I have collected the mohairs from the projects that are leftovers. These are from Cardi Jumper and this is from the Good Grandpa cardigan. And there are these little tiny skeins of stuff. And this is the Ara. Ara mohair that is hand dyed and I love it. It is such a pretty color. I have collected these things and now they are just waiting for a project where I can put them in. I just really, really need to sort this out. But I need the Ziploc bags or something similar because these are unraveling and super messy. These are actually the last things from there that are not staying there and it is this pile of mohair and merino these are leftovers from my Guernsey cancer these are Sunday Sky and Sunday and this is knitting for olive soft silk mohair and they are quite similar to these ones that are from Knitting for Olive there is merino and mohair and together they could be something pretty but there is quite a little left so I don't know what to do but I will hold on to them and figure out something nice with these. It's very hard to store these random tiny bits of yarn without them tangling and unraveling everywhere so I don't know what to do with them I have the urge to keep these together because they look so nice together um, but I don't know what that means with my storage system but yeah I now have this pile of yarn on the floor and my energy is kind of slowly fading away 
Um, so I'll get back to you when I have the Ziploc bags and I can sort these out. Sounds like a plan. Can we just pretend that this is not the entirely different day and different outfit and everything? And I even wash my hair and so on. Um, it is the next day. I ended up picking up the Ziploc bags and sorting them out in this felted thingy. And I am done with sorting out my yarn, organizing my stash. So I thought we could do this little wrap up and maybe talk a little bit about uh, stash enhancements and acquisitions um, because I have thoughts about it and I have done things that are not in line with what I said earlier so we can talk about them. Let's just go through with the entire closet now that it's done. So here on the top shelves are the neutral colored yarns. There are wools, there are cotton blends, there are other plant fibers, there's silk mohair. So they are not organized by yarn types. And the next row is my pinks and purples. Again, there is multiple different types of yarn in this shelf and I just went with the flow and what looks nice and brings me joy. Bottom here we have two shelves. Here I have all my random bits of merino and uh, wool yarns. Um, there might be some sweater quantities but they are in this random balls that some of are frogged. Here are my summer yarns, mostly cotton and thin line. Here are some blue tones. Uh, this is the Knitting for Olive cotton merino secondhand yarn and here are some mohairs and alpaca. And on the bottom shelf there is the sweater quantity of the green alpaca wool blend, some sock yarns. Here I organized the tiny bits, bits of yarn that go together with these ones, but I just wanted to put them nicely away in their own Ziploc bags. And here is the one cone of this I'm not sure what fiber it is, but it is synthetic, so I'm not sure what I will do with it. I originally bought it for a teddy vest, but I'm not sure if I can handle wearing it or knitting with it. So I might try it for a teddy clutch or some kind of bag or something for the home, like a pillowcase or something. This is it. On top of there lives my Swift and Ball Winder. And in here are some inspiring pinkish beige yarn, merino and mohair. And here's the bag 
that will be the toaster key. I'm probably just gonna put it here in the summer yarn pile to wait for its turn, which hopefully will come soon. There is still this random box of yarn that did not fit in there. They are some leftover um, merino cotton yarns that I'm not so excited about. Some frogged yarn in these bags and the drops air. And I will put this in the other closet because it doesn't fit in there and I'm not super excited about them right now. So I'll store them away and maybe I'll have some projects for them in the future. Yeah, that is my new yarn cabinet and I'm so excited about it. I'm very, um, I'm very pleased on how it looks and I find it inspiring that I see the things very easily so that it's not in boxes or anything. And I'll probably update the upstairs when there are some gaps in there. But eventually I would like that this cabinet could hold all of my yarn and also all of my knitting supplies. Um, now I probably can't fit in there the knitting needles and buttons and I have this small pouch for the very tiny scraps that I'm gonna use for something some at some time and then there are also my knitting books and magazines so ideally it would be so that this top half would be for yarns and the bottom half would be for all of the um other things i need for knitting but at this moment i am happy with this one and i am working on going to my stash this year and hopefully there will be more room in the future so i have a confession in the last stash video and in the earlier videos i said that i will try to follow this challenge that is uh, five new clothes per year and I was planning on also counting all of the yarn that I buy for that challenge um, and I could have done it probably uh, if I would have only used the yarn that I have in stash and not buy any new yarn um, but I somehow got into this test knitting phase that I was test knitting a lot and I couldn't find the yarn in my stash. Even though I thought that this yarn might work, then it turned out it didn't work and then I bought new yarn. And somehow I am now over that five clothing <laughs> limit or yarn for five new projects and I am okay with that it is around probably around six uh, new projects worth of yarn um, both as a new yarn I have bought more secondhand yarn um, but I'm counting the new new ones and I'm trying to be gentle with myself because knitting is for me all about enjoyment and I need yarn to enjoy my <laughs> knitting but looking at my stash now uh, I find that there are so many beautiful yarns that I just want to work with them at the moment and I'm trying not to buy new yarn for the rest of the year. If there comes something phenomenal, then fine, I probably will. But I'm thinking that I might approach it from the yarn perspective. So I take the yarn and then I think what I might do with it and not project first. And I have so many nice yarns 
and that I can use for the projects I am excited. So there is actually no need for a new yarn. And I'm trying to uh, be more conscious consumer. And that's why I also bring this to you because you have seen my old stash and you will see the new one and see that there are new, new yarns. And I don't think that buying yarn is bad so don't feel like i am shaming you in any way i just had this personal goal that i didn't fulfill and it kind of stings but i'm trying to be gentle with myself all of this yarn in here i is is the yarn that i'm very excited to use and in the bottom cabinet there are yarns that I'm not super excited about, but I know that there are things that I can use them for. And I might have to start looking for um, scrap projects or some something that can use smaller amounts of yarn without looking too fuzzy. It is, it is kind of hard for me uh, because I really would like to use the yarn. I have and after I have used these I will probably have a lot of leftovers as well. But yeah, I said in the beginning of the year that I will try to knit from this stash and for the first part of the year, for like for January till March, I actually was on surplus <laughs> so I bought more yarn that I knitted up or uh, gifted or sold and that is usually how my brain works when there is very strict rules or um, when I say to myself that I cannot do something I really want to do it so after that I kind of changed my um, approach and I started to think more about the yarn I have and try to find things to knit with it and I'm happy to say that I have <laughs> started to um, decrease the amount that I have and last month the only thing I bought was two balls of line and that was only for a project that I had yarn but I needed more yarn for that. And in the future I think that I will only buy yarn if it's for a project that I want to cast on immediately. Uh, I have multiple things in my stash that I have bought for a project, but I didn't cast on um, in a long time. And then I didn't want to do it anymore. And then it's just in my stash. So I will probably try to buy only when I'm wanting to cast on a project. And the other thing is if I have gift cards or something and when I'm going to a place where I cannot go often. If I go to Norway, I want to buy yarn or something like that or the, the yarn festival. I like yarn souvenirs, so I think those are okay. So I'm trying to put some loose guidelines for my consumption of yarn. I am trying to achieve the goal that by the end of this year this cabinet is for the yarn and the yarn craft supplies and they don't have to be all over uh, in my in my other closet and I think it is achievable. I just need to not buy a lot of yarn and start using what I have. And yeah, I hope that you know that I am not guilting you or I'm not guilting myself. And I just try to be a bit more conscious. It has been my goal this year and I have not been successful, but I can still continue with the kind of similar guidelines and try to keep my consumption at bay. Part of it 
is of course also the price of yarn because I have been on medical leave for over three months now and it's not very kind for my wallet and I have the yarn so I have no need to use money at the moment to buy more yarn and I like the idea that it would all be in this very compact cabinet and I would have easy access to all of my yarns. I get easily overwhelmed so that is also one reason why I'm trying to manage my stash and not let it be overflowing. <laughs> so this is the current state of my stash and maybe I'll do an updated video later this year or start of the next year. I'm so happy that you were here and I would love if you would leave a com comment down below maybe about is this a large stash or a small stash and what was your favorite yarn. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!